Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. The round that we'll be testing today is Hornady's new CX bullet. This is an all copper monolithic bullet and Hornady just recently brought these to market. We've got it loaded up in our 308 to just shy of about 3,500 feet per second. We'll be testing from one to 500 yards in our Ruger American. We're very excited to see how Hornady's new line performs. So let's get started. All right, man, what's your prediction? Uh, just a geyser. A geyser? Just a full-on geyser. 110 grainers at uh, almost 3,500 feet per second? I also think it's going to stop like the second jug. You do or don't? I do. I think it's just going to dump all that energy, huh? Yeah. It's moving so fast. As we are here to find out. That was pretty. That was pretty cool. Yeah, just vapors. <laughs> All right, man. What's your prediction? Uh, fuck. Same as the 100. Yeah. Yeah. I hope not. Yeah, I think I think we're just gonna shatter everything. See if it looks the same. Yeah. That looked a lot better than the last one. Did it? Yeah. That was a hell of a mist. <laughs> yeah, it goes to show you how fast those CX bullets are moving. Oh, dude, they get to the target so quick. 3,400 feet. And change. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> they get there quick. It's just it's quicker than you ever expect a 308 to get somewhere. Absolutely. And just the destruction. Mm -hmm. Well man, I definitely gotta say this has been an interesting experiment running 110 grades through a 308. Yeah. It's like I'm super impressed by like how flat these are and how quick they get there. And the destruction on target. Yeah. Might need to get like a slightly tougher bullet though. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. I mean, the pedals have just been turning into shrapnel. Yeah, powderizing. Excellent. Nice. Excellent. So, to get some hot food after this? Yeah, dude, I'm down. Hell yeah, what are you gonna get? Well, I gotta do that no carb thing that I'm good with my girl, you know. Ah. Uh, okay. So something with no carbs, because <laughs> you know we're hipsters and all that. Yeah, you can get a keto burger. Yay. Nice. Sweet. So we might be assholes. Here's our recovered projectiles, or to be frank, what's left of them. Cards on the table, we didn't think this would happen, but we did expect some fragmenting at the closer ranges because we knew that with our load, these would be traveling just shy of 3,500 feet per second at the muzzle. That load was a compressed charge of ramshot tack, which almost filled our 308 cases up to the rim of the case mouth. We sourced this load from Barnes's website as a max recommended charge for the 110 grain TSX. And we went with Barnes load data rather than Hornady's because in our experience across all calibers, Hornady's data tends to be more on the conservative side. We even discussed prior to loading these that there was a good chance Hornady had made the 110 grain offering of the new CX in 30 cal for cartridges like 300 Blackout, and as such may have been engineered to open up at lower velocities compared to heavier options in this diameter. Nevertheless, we've been wanting to run some 110 grain monolithics through a 308. The Barnes TSX has been on our list to test for a while, and these sort of fell into our lap, so we figured we'd give them a go. Our experience with Hornady's GMX and Monoflex bullets in the past has been that they're very hard. They tend to need a lot of velocity to open up properly, so we thought that these could handle the strain. 
turns out we may have miscalculated, and these results may be more of an indication that a judgment error occurred on our part rather than an accurate reflection of the CX's quality. Further testing with this bullet and other chamberings will be required to ascertain whether or not that's the case. Today, we're discussing these bullets though, so let's look at some close-up pictures of what we were able to recover. At 100 yards, we've got a pile of copper alloy pieces. What's left of the core is sitting in the middle here, and a couple of chunks on the bottom sort of resemble what would have been petals, but today they're fragments. You'll notice that we've included the projected impact velocity at the bottom of the image, and we'll give you those for all the other ranges as well. The impact velocity was estimated using Hornady's own 4 DOF calculator using the pre-programmed values of the 110 grain CX, along with our atmospheric conditions on the day of shooting, with our muzzle velocity of around 3480 feet per second. At 200 yards, the results are much the same as the 100. The fragments do appear to resemble petals more closely at this range. The core is the same, a small puck of copper similar in size and shape to an ibuprofen tablet. 300 yards is really no different. We couldn't find as much of the bullet. The pieces may have been ejected when they exploded upon impact or were washed away by the deluge they created. At 400, our recovered projectile finally starts to resemble an actual bullet. Some of the petals are still intact, and on the lower left we have the recovered plastic tip, which is Hornady's proprietary heat shield tip. Hornady states that the heat shield tip, quote, is made of a heat-resistant polymer that resists aerodynamic heating, end quote. Since we were able to recover the almost intact tip, which by this point had withstood a massive amount of heat and pressure, Hornady's claim regarding the heat shield tip seems to be accurate. 500 is very similar to the 400. We have what looks to be beautiful expansion from the core, forming the foundations of what almost resembles a deadly lotus flower. Moving on from our images, let's take a peek at our graphs, and we've got a roller coaster of figures dancing all over the place. Expansion at the close ranges is poor due to all the petals being torn off, as is retained weight, and at the further ranges we have much better expansion and more weight. This gives us average expansion of 1.92, which I'd usually consider to be great for a homogeneous bullet, but in this case the individual values are so far apart that I don't think this is a good indication of how you could really expect this bullet to perform, and we can see this inconsistency in our high standard deviation. Expansion at 400 and 500 yards when the bullet had shed some velocity was exceptional. The recovered projectiles produced figures which rival premium bonded core bullets, but I'd like to see this occurring much more consistently. Now in talking about how the CX in this grain weight and chambering performs, we need to consider a few other factors, and in my opinion there are some major benefits to this round. Sitting on a massive charge of powder, this 110 grain bullet was able to turn our 308 into a laser beam. These projectiles made that plain old cartridge act like some high step in magnum, putting bullets on target at 500 faster than we could blink. Getting on target quick means a flat trajectory, and shooters who don't like having to deal with drop adjustments may enjoy the 1.2 mil adjustment needed to center punch targets at 500 yards. With such a light projectile weight, there wasn't much counteraction going on internally upon ignition. This means that even with such a steep charge of powder, we had extremely light felt recoil, dare I say less than what we expect when firing a 6.5 Creedmoor in some cases. This makes a 308 a very viable cartridge for recoil sensitive shooters. So from that perspective, our internal and external ballistics are looking pretty good. But what about terminal ballistics? Well, the CX bullet never penetrated past the third row of jugs. At most ranges, we found the core somewhere around the second row, with the fragments dispersed through the other jugs around them. There was not deep penetration, so this bullet in this grain weight, in this chambering, may not be the best option for heavier game, such as elk or bear. This is in line with Hornady's recommendation that it be used on medium game up to 300 pounds. Now the inverse of a deep, narrow wound channel is a shallow, wide channel. We definitely saw that. When the CX hit, it completely obliterated the jug it impacted, almost appearing to go off like an airburst grenade, fragging everything around it with copper alloy shrapnel. Moving at such a high velocity, this round has an immense amount of energy, and all that energy has to go somewhere. Upon impact at all ranges tested, the CX dumped its energy into the target, and considering that velocity plays an exponentially larger role in generating foot-pounds of energy over weight, these bullets were carrying an extremely high amount of energy upon impact. In my opinion, if you hit a deer with one of these, which would be a breeze to do out to four or 500 yards considering the extremely light recoil and flat trajectory, the CX would probably transfer such a huge amount of energy that it would shatter ribs and shred lung tissue. Even if the energy didn't, the shrapnel might. 
And while the concept of hydrostatic shock is a highly contested topic, this would be an excellent example of a bullet that might, in theory, cause hydrostatic shock. I think this makes it a good choice for young or recoil adverse hunters. Projectiles in this family of weight class keep you from having to purchase your kid a 243 when they come of age to start hunting. Just give them your old 308 with some 110 grain monolithics and off they go. This though begs the question of how the CXs stack up against other homogenous bullets in this grain weight and velocity. That's something we are going to answer. We just sourced a box of Barnes TSXs in 110 grain, and we, we will be testing those shortly. Now Hornady says one of the big selling points to the CX is that it extends the range that hunters can expect effective expansion at, and I completely agree with them. I think this bullet would expand great at lower velocities, and we're going to try some more offerings of the CX and other grain weights and calibers. We've currently got some 165s sitting on the loading bench that we're waiting to source powder for before we load them up into our 300 wind mag, and we're going to be sourcing more CXs for lower velocity chamberings as well. If you'd like to see those and other expansion tests, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. If you got something out of today's content, consider helping us out with a like, and feel free to drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.